The amygdala, meaning almond-shaped, is a collection of nuclei within the brain. It is a paired structure with one in each hemisphere. The amygdala is thought to play a role in a number of different functions, but it is most commonly implicated in the control of fear. The amygdala is located within the medial temporal lobe and is composed of a number of different nuclei. Some of the main nuclei are the lateral nucleus, the basal nucleus, the central lateral nucleus, and the central medial nucleus. There are also groups of intercalated cells dispersed within the fibre tracts of the nuclei. Two important groups of intercalated cells are the dorsal intercalated cells and the ventral intercalated cells. The lateral nucleus is the primary input nucleus of the amygdala. It receives inputs from the thalamus and the cortex, which provide it with information about the sensory stimuli the animal is experiencing. The primary output nuclei of the amygdala is the central medial nucleus. This projects to a number of different structures. It projects to the paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus and triggers the release of the stress hormone cortisol. It also projects to the lateral hypothalamus, stimulating the autonomic nervous system. And it also projects to the periequiductal gray matter, which in mice causes fear behaviors such as freezing. By coordinating these downstream targets, the amygdala is able to produce many of the physiological changes associated with feelings of fear, including increased heart rate, sweating, and dilation of the pupils. One of the best studied functions of the amygdala is that of fear conditioning. Put simply, this is where an animal learns to fear something. In a typical fear conditioning experiment, a mouse is given an unconditioned stimulus, which is inherently negative, such as a painful foot shock, which causes a natural, unconditioned response. In this case, the expression of fear. The experiment also uses a neutral stimulus, such as a sound, which on its own produces no fear. After a number of trials, when the neutral and unconditioned stimuli are presented together, the animal learns the association between the sound and the shock. The neutral stimulus of the sound is then able to cause the fear behaviour itself, without the shock. As the process of learning in this way is known as classical conditioning, the stimulus is then referred to as a conditioned stimulus and the response referred to as a conditioned response. Related to fear conditioning is the concept of fear extinction. Extinction occurs when the conditioned stimulus of the tone is presented repeatedly without the unconditioned stimulus of the foot shock. The animal gradually learns that the sound no longer predicts a shock, the association is broken, and the fear behaviour is no longer displayed. The amygdala is thought to be the primary area of the brain responsible for fear conditioning. And the classic model of how it does this is as follows. The unconditioned stimulus of the foot shock travels through the spinal cord to the thalamus and the cortex, which then both project to the lateral nucleus of the amygdala. The synaptic inputs from the unconditioned stimulus of the shock are strong enough to excite the lateral amygdala neurons, which in turn results in the activation of neurons in the central medial nucleus and produces a fear response. The neutral stimulus of the sound also flows through the thalamus to the auditory cortex. The thalamus and cortex then also project to the lateral nucleus of the amygdala. However, the inputs from the neutral stimulus alone are not strong enough to cause the lateral amygdala neurons to depolarize. So the central amygdala neurons remain unstimulated and no fear is displayed. However, when the neurons encoding the shock and the neurons encoding the sound fire together, synaptic plasticity occurs, like we've seen in the previous videos. This strengthens the synapse between the incoming neurons carrying information about the neutral stimulus of the sound and the lateral amygdala neurons, until eventually the synapse is strong enough to allow them to stimulate the lateral amygdala neurons on their own without the help of the neurons encoding the unconditioned stimulus of the shock. The lateral nucleus of the amygdala then excites the central medial nucleus and produces feelings of fear. The neutral stimulus then becomes a conditioned stimulus and is able to produce the conditioned response of fear without the foot shock. After fear conditioning, mice not only express fear with the conditioned stimulus, but also when returned to the chamber in which the experiment took place. The mice have learnt not only to fear the stimulus, but also the context surrounding it as well. This is known as contextual fear conditioning. One of the primary areas responsible for this is the hippocampus, 
which, as we have seen in previous videos, plays an important role in storing episodic memories. Neurons from CA1 and the subiculum areas of the hippocampus project to the basal nucleus of the amygdala, and through this are able to stimulate the central medial nucleus and allow contextual cues to produce fear. In conclusion, we can see that the amygdala is a cluster of nuclei within the brain, which produces many of the physiological aspects of fear. The amygdala also plays a key role in helping us learn what to fear, and the best studied example of this is fear conditioning. In fear conditioning, synaptic plasticity allows a weaker sensory stimulus to trigger a fear response when paired with an unpleasant stimulus. The amygdala also interacts with other brain areas, such as the hippocampus, to allow context to affect our expression of fear.